Astrocyte, Wikipedia article audio. Astrocytes, also known collectively as astroglia, are characteristic star-shaped glial cells in the brain and spinal cord. The proportion of astrocytes in the brain is not well defined. Depending on the counting technique used, studies have found that the astrocyte proportion varies by region and ranges from 20% to 40% of all glia. They perform many functions, including biochemical support of endothelial cells that form the blood-brain barrier, provision of nutrients to the nervous tissue, maintenance of extracellular ion balance, and a role in the repair and scarring process of the brain and spinal cord following traumatic injuries. Research since the mid-1990s has shown that astrocytes propagate intercellular Ca2 plus waves over long distances in response to stimulation, and, similar to neurons, release transmitters in a Ca2 plus dependent manner. Data suggest that astrocytes also signal to neurons through Ca2 plus dependent release of glutamate. Such discoveries have made astrocytes an important area of research within the field of neuroscience. Structure Development Astrocytes are a subtype of glial cells in the central nervous system. They are also known as astrocytic glial cells. Star-shaped, their many processes envelop synapses made by neurons. Astrocytes are classically identified using histological analysis, many of these cells express the intermediate filament glial fibrillary acidic protein. Several forms of astrocytes exist in the central nervous system including fibrous, protoplasmic, and radial. The fibrous glia are usually located within white matter, have relatively few organelles, and exhibit long unbranched cellular processes. This type often has vascular feet that physically connect the cells to the outside of capillary walls when they are in proximity to them. The protoplasmic glia are the most prevalent and are found in gray matter tissue, possess a larger quantity of organelles, and exhibit short and highly branched tertiary processes. The radial glia are disposed in planes perpendicular to the axis of ventricles. One of their processes abuts the pia mater, while the other is deeply buried in gray matter. Radial glia are mostly present during development, playing a role in neuron migration. Muller cells of the retina and Bergman glia cells of the cerebellar cortex represent an exception, being present still during adulthood. When in proximity to the pia mater, all three forms of astrocytes send out processes to form the pia glial membrane. Astrocytes are macroglial cells in the central nervous system. Astrocytes are derived from heterogeneous populations of progenitor cells in the neuroepithelium of the developing central nervous system. There is remarkable similarity between the well-known genetic mechanisms that specify the lineage of diverse neuron subtypes and that of macroglial cells. Just as with neuronal cell specification, canonical signaling factors like sonic hedgehog, fibroblast growth factor WNTs, and bone morphogenetic proteins, provide positional information to developing macroglial cells through morphogen gradients along the dorsal ventral, anterior posterior and medial lateral axes. The resultant patterning along the neuraxis leads to segmentation of the neuroepithelium into progenitor domains for distinct neuron types in the developing spinal cord. On the basis of several studies it is now believed that this model also applies to macroglial cell specification. Studies carried out by Hodge Stim and colleagues have demonstrated that three distinct populations of astrocytes arise from the P1, P2, and P3 domains. These subtypes of astrocytes can be identified on the basis of their expression of different transcription factors and cell surface markers. 
The three populations of astrocyte subtypes which have been identified are one dorsally located VA1 astrocytes, derived from P1 domain, express PAX6, and RELIN2 ventrally located VA3 astrocytes, derived from P3, express NKX6.1 and SLIT1 and 3 and intermediate white matter located VA2 astrocyte, derived from the P2 domain which express PAX6, NKX6.1, RELIN and SLIT1. After astrocyte specification has occurred in the developing CNS, it is believed that astrocyte precursors migrate to their final positions within the nervous system before the process of terminal differentiation occurs. Previously in medical science, the neuronal network was considered the only important function of astrocytes, and they were looked upon as gap fillers. More recently, the function of astrocytes has been reconsidered, and they are now thought to play a number of active roles in the brain, including the secretion or absorption of neural transmitters and maintenance of the blood-brain barrier. Following on this idea the concept of a tripartite synapse has been proposed, referring to the tight relationship occurring at synapses among a presynaptic element, a postsynaptic element and a glial element. Astrocytes are linked by gap junctions, creating an electrically coupled syncytium. Because of this ability of astrocytes to communicate with their neighbors, Changes in the activity of one astrocyte can have repercussions on the activities of others that are quite distant from the original astrocyte. Function An influx of Ca2 plus ions into astrocytes is the essential change that ultimately generates calcium waves. Because this influx is directly caused by an increase in blood flow to the brain, Calcium waves are said to be a kind of hemodynamic response function. An increase in intracellular calcium concentration can propagate outwards through this functional syncytium. Mechanisms of calcium wave propagation include diffusion of calcium ions and IP3 through gap junctions and extracellular ADP signaling. Calcium elevations are the primary known axis of activation in astrocytes, and are necessary and sufficient for some types of astrocytic glutamate release. Given the importance of calcium signaling in astrocytes, tight regulatory mechanisms for the progression of the spatiotemporal calcium signaling have been developed. Via mathematical analysis it has been shown that localized inflow of Ca2 plus ions yields a localized raise in the cytosolic concentration of Ca2 plus ions. Moreover, cytosolic Ca2 plus accumulation is independent of every intracellular calcium flux and depends on the Ca2 plus exchange across the membrane, cytosolic calcium diffusion, geometry of the cell extracellular calcium perturbation, and initial concentrations. Bergman glia, a type of glia also known as radial epithelial cells or Golgi epithelial cells or due to lack of ependymal processes should be called radially oriented astrocytes, are astrocytes in the cerebellum that have their cell bodies in the Porcunier cell average 3 to 6 cell per Porcunier layer and processes that extend into the molecular layer, terminating with bulbous end feet at the pial surface. Bergman glial cells form rows or palisades that are aligned to the long axis of folium characterized by high surface to volume ratio up to 20 micrometers in rodent cerebellum there are 8 Bergman glial cells per Porcunier cell it has been estimated that each BGC operates around 2000 to 6000 Porcunier cell synapses. They occupy around 15% 18% of the molecular layer in cerebellum. The size and shape differ dependence on animal species thus length of molecular layer which we call adaptive growth of astroglial cell processes. 
The length of processes is determined by the molecular layer in humans for example the processes are longer but show less dense lateral outgrow. The Bergman glia has subtype called Fanina cells which are located rather in with somata located in molecular layer. Bergman glia express high densities of glutamate transporters that limit diffusion of the neurotransmitter glutamate during its release from synaptic terminals. Besides their role in early development of the cerebellum for example Bergman glia are one of main contributors of neuronal migration in cerebellum of the granule cell neurons using SHH and cell cycle genes as D2 cyclin PP2A and the cell specification of granule cell neurons by activating NOTCH2 and JAGAD2 receptors, these processes extends along whole cerebellum. Bergman glia are also required for the pruning or addition of synapses. Bergman glia form microdomain topology which are used as repetitive units on the stem of Porcanier cells processes each microdomain consists of thin stalk and cabbage-like head structure that bears lamellar perisynaptic sheaths around about five synapses these microdomains may interact with synapses independently of each other also of the stem processes. The microdomains overlap in every given volume unit of the molecular layer at least two microdomains originate from different Bergman glia this fit to the observation that Porcanier cells express two functionally distinct populations of synaptic spines and individual spines are capable of independent activation. Bergman glia Within the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, Activated astrocytes have the ability to respond to almost all neurotransmitters and, upon activation, release a multitude of neuroactive molecules such as glutamate, ADP, nitric oxide, prostaglandins, which in turn influences neuronal excitability. The close association between astrocytes and presynaptic and postsynaptic terminals as well as their ability to integrate synaptic activity and release neuromodulators has been termed the tripartite synapse. Synaptic modulation by astrocytes takes place because of this three-part association. Astrocytomas are primary intracranial tumors derived from astrocytes cells of the brain. It is also possible that glial progenitors or neural stem cells give rise to astrocytomas. Astrocytomas are brain tumors that develop from astrocytes. They may occur in many parts of the brain and sometimes in the spinal cord. They can occur at any age and they primarily occur in males. Astrocytomas are divided into two categories, low grade and high grade. Low-grade tumors are more common in children and high-grade tumors are more common in adults. Tripartite Synapse Pilocytic astrocytoma are grade I tumors. They are considered benign and slow-growing tumors. Pilocytic astrocytomas frequently have cystic portions filled with fluid and a nodule, which is the solid portion. Most are located in the cerebellum. Therefore, most symptoms are related to balance or coordination difficulties. They also occur more frequently in children and teens. Clinical Significance Grade 2 tumors grow relatively slow but invade surrounding healthy tissue. Usually considered benign but can grow into malignant tumors. Other names that are used are fibrillary or protoplasmic astrocytomas. They are prevalent in younger people who are often present with seizures. Astrocytomas Anaplastic astrocytoma is classified as grade 3 and are malignant tumors. They grow more rapidly than lower grade tumors and tend to invade nearby healthy tissue. Anaplastic astrocytomas recur more frequently than lower grade tumors because their tendency to spread into surrounding tissue makes them difficult to completely remove surgically. 
Glioblastoma multiforme is also a malignant tumor and classified as a grade 4. Glioblastomas can contain more than one cell type. Also, while one cell type may die off in response to a particular treatment, the other cell types may continue to multiply. Glioblastomas are the most invasive type of glial tumors as they grow rapidly and spread to nearby tissue. Approximately 50% of astrocytomas are glioblastomas and are very difficult to treat. Neurodevelopment Disorders A relatively new direction has emerged in the field of neurodevelopmental disorders. This view states that astrocyte dysfunction may play a role in the aberration of neuronal circuitry that underlies certain psychiatric disorders, including the autism spectrum disorders and schizophrenia. Under normal conditions, pain conduction begins with some noxious signal followed by an action potential carried by nociceptive afferent neurons which elicit excitatory postsynaptic potentials in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. That message is then relayed to the cerebral cortex, where we translate those EPSBs into pain. Since the discovery of astrocytic influence, our understanding of the conduction of pain has been dramatically complicated. Pain processing is no longer seen as a repetitive relay of signals from body to brain but as a complex system that can be up and down regulated by a number of different factors. One factor at the forefront of recent research is in the pain potentiating synapse located in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and the role of astrocytes in encapsulating these synapses. Garrison and co-workers were the first to suggest association when they found a correlation between astrocyte hypertrophy in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and hypersensitivity to pain after peripheral nerve injury, typically considered an indicator of glial activation after injury. Astrocytes detect neuronal activity and can release chemical transmitters, which in turn control synaptic activity. In the past, hyperalgesia was thought to be modulated by the release of substance P and excitatory amino acids, such as glutamate, from the presynaptic afferent nerve terminals in the spinal cord dorsal horn. Subsequent activation of AMPA, NMDA, and kinate subtypes of ionotropic glutamate receptors follows. It is the activation of these receptors that potentiates the pain signal up the spinal cord. This idea, although true, is an oversimplification of pain transduction. A litany of other neurotransmitter and neuromodulators, such as calcitonin gene-related peptide, adenosine triphosphate, brain-derived neurotrophic factor, somatostatin, Vasoactive intestinal peptide, galenin, and vasopressin are all synthesized and released in response to noxious stimuli. In addition to each of these regulatory factors, several other interactions between pain transmitting neurons and other neurons in the dorsal horn have added impact on pain pathways. After persistent peripheral tissue damage there is a release of several factors from the injured tissue as well as in the spinal dorsal horn. These factors increase the responsiveness of the dorsal horn pain projection neurons to ensuing stimuli, termed spinal sensitization, thus amplifying the pain impulse to the brain. Release of glutamate, substance P, and calcitonin gene-related peptide mediates NMDAR activation, thus aiding in depolarization of the postsynaptic pain transmitting neurons. In addition, activation of IP3 signaling and MAPKs such as ERK and JNK, bring about an increase in the synthesis of inflammatory factors that alter glutamate transporter function. ERK also further activates AMPARs and NMDARs in neurons. Nociception is further sensitized by the association of ADP and substance P with their respective receptors and neurokinin-1 receptor, 
as well as activation of metabotropic glutamate receptors and release of BDNF. Persistent presence of glutamate in the synapse eventually results in dysregulation of GLT-1 and GLAST, crucial transporters of glutamate into astrocytes. Ongoing excitation can also induce ERK and JNK activation, resulting in release of several inflammatory factors. As noxious pain is sustained, Spinal sensitization creates transcriptional changes in the neurons of the dorsal horn that lead to altered function for extended periods. Mobilization of Ca2 plus from internal stores results from persistent synaptic activity and leads to the release of glutamate, ADP, tumor necrosis factor alpha, interleukin 1 beta, IL6, nitric oxide, and prostaglandin E2. Activated astrocytes are also a source of matrix metalloproteinase 2, which induces pro-IL-1 beta cleavage and sustains astrocyte activation. In this chronic signaling pathway, P38 is activated as a result of IL-1 beta signaling, and there is a presence of chemokines that trigger their receptors to become active. In response to nerve damage, Heat shock proteins are released and can bind to their respective TLRs, leading to further activation. Other clinically significant pathologies involving astrocytes include astrogliosis and astrocytopathy. Chronic pain A study performed in November 2010 and published March 2011, was done by a team of scientists from the University of Rochester and University of Colorado School of Medicine. They did an experiment to attempt to repair trauma to the central nervous system of an adult rat by replacing the glial cells. When the glial cells were injected into the injury of the adult rat's spinal cord, astrocytes were generated by exposing human glial precursor cells to bone morphogenetic protein. So, with the bone protein and human glial cells combined, they promoted significant recovery of conscious foot placement, axonal growth, and obvious increases in neuronal survival in the spinal cord laminae. On the other hand, human glial precursor cells and astrocytes generated from these cells by being in contact with ciliary neurotrophic factors, failed to promote neuronal survival and support of axonal growth at the spot of the injury. Two states of persistent pain One study done in Shanghai had two types of hippocampal neuronal cultures, in one culture, the neuron was grown from a layer of astrocytes and the other culture was not in contact with any astrocytes, but they were instead fed a glial conditioned medium which inhibits the rapid growth of cultured astrocytes in the brains of rats in most cases. In their results they were able to see that astrocytes had a direct role in long-term potentiation with the mixed culture but not in GCM cultures. Structural, they are involved in the physical structuring of the brain. Astrocytes get their name because they are star-shaped. They are the most abundant glial cells in the brain that are closely associated with neuronal synapses. They regulate the transmission of electrical impulses within the brain, glycogen fuel reserve buffer, astrocytes contain glycogen and are capable of glycogenesis. The astrocytes next to neurons in the frontal cortex and hippocampus store and release glycogen. Thus, Astrocytes can fuel neurons with glucose during periods of high rate of glucose consumption and glucose shortage. Recent research suggests there may be a connection between this activity and exercise, metabolic support, they provide neurons with nutrients such as lactate, blood-brain barrier, the astrocyte end feed encircling endothelial cells were thought to aid in the maintenance of the blood-brain barrier but recent research indicates that they do not play a substantial role, instead, 
it is the tight junctions and basal lamina of the cerebral endothelial cells that play the most substantial role in maintaining the barrier. However, it has recently been shown that astrocyte activity is linked to blood flow in the brain, and that this is what is actually being measured in fMRI, transmitter uptake and release. Astrocytes express plasma membrane transporters such as glutamate transporters for several neurotransmitters, including glutamate, ADP, and GABA. More recently, astrocytes were shown to release glutamate or ADP in a vesicular, Ca2 plus dependent manner, regulation of ion concentration in the extracellular space. Astrocytes express potassium channels at a high density. When neurons are active, they release potassium, increasing the local extracellular concentration. Because astrocytes are highly permeable to potassium, they rapidly clear the excess accumulation in the extracellular space. If this function is interfered with, the extracellular concentration of potassium will rise, leading to neuronal depolarization by the Goldman equation. Abnormal accumulation of extracellular potassium is well known to result in epileptic neuronal activity, modulation of synaptic transmission, in the supraoptic nucleus of the hypothalamus, rapid changes in astrocyte morphology have been shown to affect heterosynaptic transmission between neurons. In the hippocampus, astrocytes suppress synaptic transmission by releasing ADP, which is hydrolyzed by ectonucleotidases to yield adenosine. Adenosine acts on neuronal adenosine receptors to inhibit synaptic transmission, thereby increasing the dynamic range available for LTP, vasomodulation. Astrocytes may serve as intermediaries in neuronal regulation of blood flow, promotion of the myelinating activity of oligodendrocytes, Electrical activity in neurons causes them to release ADP, which serves as an important stimulus for myelin to form. However, the ADP does not act directly on oligodendrocytes. Instead, it causes astrocytes to secrete cytokine leukemia inhibitory factor, a regulatory protein that promotes the myelinating activity of oligodendrocytes. This suggests that astrocytes have an executive coordinating role in the brain, nervous system repair, upon injury to nerve cells within the central nervous system, astrocytes fill up the space to form a glial scar, and may contribute to neural repair. The role of astrocytes in CNS regeneration following injury is not well understood though. The glial scar has traditionally been described as an impermeable barrier to regeneration, thus implicating a negative role in axon regeneration. However, recently, it was found through genetic ablation studies that astrocytes are actually required for regeneration to occur. More importantly, the authors found that the astrocyte scar is actually essential for stimulated axons to extend through the injured spinal cord. Astrocytes that have been pushed into a reactive phenotype may actually be toxic to neurons, releasing signals that can kill neurons. Much work, however, remains to elucidate their role in nervous system injury, long-term potentiation, Scientists debate whether astrocytes integrate learning and memory in the hippocampus. Recently it has been shown that engrafting human glial progenitor cell in the nascent mice brains will cause the cells to differentiate into astrocytes. After differentiation these cells increase LTP and improve memory performance in the mice, the switch of the nervous system, based on the evidence listed below. It has been recently conjectured in, that macroglia act both as a lossy neurotransmitter capacitor and as the logical switch of the nervous system. I.e., macroglia either block or enable the propagation of the stimulus along the nervous system, depending on their membrane state and the level of the stimulus.
Studies have shown that astrocytes play an important function in the regulation of neural stem cells. Research from the Shepin's Eye Research Institute at Harvard shows the human brain to abound in neural stem cells, which are kept in a dormant state by chemical signals from the astrocytes. The astrocytes are able to activate the stem cells to transform into working neurons by dampening the release of ephrine A2 and ephrine A3. In a study published in a 2011 issue of Nature Biotechnology a group of researchers from the University of Wisconsin reports that it has been able to direct embryonic and induced human stem cells to become astrocytes. Type 1, antigenically RIN2+, GFAP+, FGFR3+, A2B5, thus resembling the type 1 astrocyte of the postnatal day 7 rat optic nerve. These can arise from the tripotential glial restricted precursor cells, but not from the bipotential O2A OPC cells, type 2, antigenically A2B5+, GFAP+, FGFR3, RAN2. These cells can develop in vitro from the either tripotential GRP or from bipotential O2A cells think may in turn have been derived from the GRP or in vivo when these progenitor cells are transplanted into lesion sites. Type 2 astrocytes are the major astrocytic component in postnatal optic nerve cultures that are generated by O2A cells grown in the presence of fetal calf serum but are not thought to exist in vivo. A 2012 study of the effects of marijuana on short-term memories found that THC activates CB1 receptors of astrocytes which cause receptors for AMPA to be removed from the membranes of associated neurons. Other Pathologies Research Classification Lineage and Antigenic Phenotype there are several different ways to classify astrocytes. These have been established by classic work by RAF ETAL in early 1980s on rat optic nerves. Anatomical classification Transporter-slash-receptor classification